it's your girl Nurse Reese, and you are watching Nurse Reese in the City. Hey babies, welcome back. And if this is your first time watching, welcome to my channel. Please support me by subscribing and following me on my social media accounts. You know, it's hard out here trying to build a brand and I pride myself in being a resource to you all. So if you would just help me with that, it would be greatly appreciated. Okay, so for this episode, I want to talk to you guys um, briefly about some questions that I've been getting. I've been getting a lot of questions on social media. I'm on YouTube about Capella University. So I just want to go ahead and answer some of those questions so you guys can kind of have them all in one place. I guess this will be a part one and as more questions come in, I'll um, continue this series, okay? So let me just start off with talking about some things to do to help you get started in the program even before you begin. Some people don't have prior degrees, um, other than their associates and they may not have a lot of coursework or electives and things like that. So when they um, are enrolled or when they're going through the admission process, they find out that they need to take a lot of different like classes or not to say a lot, but they, they may have to take additional classes um, to help them with those um, credits. So there is a website that um, that Capella offers. It's called Sophia. So you can definitely go to Sophia and you can um, learn more about it by going to sophia.org and that's S-O-P-H-I-A.org. So I've learned that some people didn't find out until after they had already started taking coursework that if they would have you know, participated in sophia.org, they had an opportunity to take classes for free as opposed to you know enrolling and then having to you know pay additional fees and things like that so um and you can you know you can definitely try sophia for free i believe capella offers it so you can try it for free and they also offer like 79 dollars a month so that's definitely something to look into if you're short on credits or you need more electives and things like that so definitely check out sophia.org all right so a lot of people that um, have been sending me messages have not been to college or university in a long time, you know, five years, 10 years, 15, 20 plus years. Um, for some people, writing is just not their strong point. So one way to help with the writing aspect is two things. Well, it's a few things actually. One thing is that you want to familiarize yourself with the writing format. Capella uses APA 7. They actually use APA 6 and APA 7, which they accept both, but they're phasing out of 6. So I believe April 2021, sometime around, I don't know the exact date, but April 2021, they will no longer be using um, APA 6. So APA 7 will be fully implemented um April 2021. So you definitely want to look up how to utilize APA 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link down below to where um, I'll provide a bunch of different APA resources for you so that you can familiarize yourself with that. Okay. So definitely familiarize yourself with APA format. If you need more credits or courses, go to Sophia. There are other writing tools such as Grammarly um, and that kind of helps you with your grammar basically it helps you if you're not really a good you know writer or writing is really not your strong point you're not good with like formulating sentences and you know punctuation and things like that commas and semicolons and all that um, tenses and things Grammarly can definitely help you with that Okay, there's another one that helps people with their references. So if you need help with references or even APA format, a lot of people live by um, a site called Perla. It's P-E-R-R-L-A, Perla. 
I'll put the link down below as well. Um, for me personally, I may have said this in another video, I didn't use Perla because it slowed me down, but a lot of people live by it, they swear by it, they love it, love it, love it. Um, it just, for me, it felt like double work. You know, writing is a strong point for me. It's a strong area for me. I enjoy writing. I, you know, so I don't mind, um, I don't mind uh, writing out of, uh, I wouldn't necessarily write out a reference, but there's a way that you can copy and paste um, the reference. And maybe, you know, if you need to edit it, then you can just edit it. I don't mind doing that. Um, and also one thing that I did find about Perla is that sometimes it, it doesn't always put it in the right, format so you think it's the right format and it's really not and some professors will ding you on that so there are a lot of professors I want to say a lot but there are professors who are very very stringent they are strict they are you know nitpickers with the APA format so you know if you're falling short in other areas and then you're short on the APA format that cannot that will not work in your favor so you definitely want to you know be up to par on your 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 um your references make sure that your references are accurate um and in the right format and make sure that your apa format is up to par at least know what you're doing okay um yeah so those are definitely a couple of things to think of so now i'm just going to go into some questions so i'm going to start with um, a bsn question so one of the questions that I got was, how many assignments are in the BSN program? Now, mind you, there are two BSN programs for the FlexPath. So for the, the regular BSN and not the BSN Accelerated Master's program, there are eight courses, okay? In the BSN program, I believe there are three assignments in the first course. And then the rest of the courses have four assignments, which leads up to the capstone that has five assignments. Now, I do not know if this is still accurate because I know there's been some changes since October 2020. So when I took it prior to October 2020, the capstone had five. So from what I know, the first course has three assignments. The majority of them have four, and then the capstone has five. Okay. So how many assignments are in the MSN program? I did, and that's another question. A lot of people want to know what area did I, um, what was my concentration for the MSN? My concentration was nursing education. So in the nursing education program is probably what I should speak to. I don't really know what the other um, specialties, I don't know how many courses are in the other specialties. So I, it could probably be the same, but I'm going to only speak specifically to nursing education. Now, from class 5004 to uh, 6026 and capstone, that's general. So all of those classes I can definitely um, speak to because like I said, those are general. And then, and then I'll also let you know how many uh, nursing education has. So. Let me get into these general courses. Five, and I don't remember the names. Um, you know what? I can get the names for you guys because I, I like you guys. So I can do that. If you bear with me, then I'll get the information for you. All right. So just give me a second while I pull this up on my computer. It doesn't even say. Um, this might be a little harder than I thought. All right, so I'm not going to do it that way because it's taking up a lot of time. So I'm just going to read the course number and I'll tell you how many um, classes, I mean, how many assignments it has. All right, let's do this. So course 5004 has three, 6004 has four, 6008 has three, 6011, three, 6016, three, 6021, three, 6026, three. Capstone has six. Capstone is 6030. So there's six and 6030, and assignments one and six are very easy. It's like, are very, very easy. Okay, so for nursing education, 6103 has five, 
6105 has four, 6107 has three, 6109 has four, 6111 has four. So there's one thing I want you guys to know about the specialty courses and I can only speak to nursing education. In nursing education, 6103 is a prerequisite to the other specialty courses. So you kind of want to take that course early on and I'll explain why. Let's say you finish all of your general classes and now you have just the specialty and capstone. Let's say um, this is a professor that you don't like or a professor that not necessarily, yeah, you may not like them. There's a professor that's, you know, in charge of this course that you don't like or you heard, you know, to stay away from or to stay like that, to stay away from. Well, now you're going to sit there and you're going to wait until either a new professor pops up or you're going to either take the plunge because you cannot get past 6103. So you can't take any other courses in the specialty program without taking that one. So basically you want to get 6103 out of the way so that you can take other courses. You know, and if you're, you know, shopping for instructors, if you move that one out of the way, it'll give you more flexibility. So you'll understand that more when you're in the program. All right. So I don't want to um, harp on that for too long. But since I was talking about good instructors and bad instructors or instructors to stay away from, that was one of my next two questions. Which instructors are good? Which instructors are not so good? So I'm going to leave a link down below where you can go and check out my own personal list of what I collected um, for which instructors are good and which ones to stay away from, okay? All right, so how many preceptor hours? Okay, so I'm only gonna speak to nursing education. Nursing education, there are 100 preceptor hours, okay? So for the other areas, I advise you to go on the Capella website and check out the information or you can, there's a little chat box called Ella, Ella chat or Ella something, Ella bot. And you can ask Ella and she'll answer the question for you or she'll guide you in the right um, area. There's a, a whole guide book that breaks everything down, the qualifications for um, the preceptor. And I can get into that. Um, so the qualifications for the preceptor are basically if you, for the MSN program, I'm speaking of, for the MSN program, if the person has to have a, a master's degree or higher, they cannot be a current Capella student, and they cannot be your direct supervisor. So if you're in a, if you're in a nursing program like I was um, doing the master's in uh, nursing education, you can have a preceptor that has a master's in fashion. As long as they have a master's degree, they can be your preceptor, okay? So your preceptor doesn't necessarily have to, or they don't even have to match what you're doing in your practicum. But your practicum needs to be like nursing related, you know, it has to help, um, it has to follow the guidelines that are out, laid out, okay? So if you have any other questions on that, refer to the study guide called the school you can ask Ella Bot, but that is the basic overview of the requirements for the instructor so access to e-portfolio that's from another um, video I guess or people saw that video and they're like well how do you access e-portfolio okay well e-portfolio is also called um, path bright now there's some things that I left out in the um, previous video that I really kind of want to hone in on and you know really you know go deep into Pathbright or ePortfolio really is a cool resource. However, the downside of ePortfolio, even though it's free, um, is that it's based on who is providing the information. So when I was in the BSN program, it was required for us to upload a, our, um, our capstone project into the e-portfolio they encourage you throughout the pro, um, throughout the program 
to upload your work to the e-portfolio. I didn't, I did it in the beginning because I didn't really know any better. And when I say I didn't know about it, I just didn't know. I didn't know it wasn't something that I necessarily didn't have to do. Um, but I stopped doing it very quickly on. But when it came down time to the capstone, I had to upload my information there and I had to make my page public so that my professor could view it. As soon as my professor graded my work, I made my page private. So, um, and that's just me. I'm just a private person, even though I you know, do videos and stuff. I'm just a private person. I just didn't want my stuff out there like that. So there's probably a lot of other people that are like that too. You know, they may not have known any better or they may have not known that it was not necessarily a requirement and have uploaded their work. And then they decided to take it down or they graduated and just didn't want their work up or whatever the reasons are. People can make their page private. They can make it public. They can remove their work. It's it's up to the person. So that is, I would say, a con as opposed to like a course hero where, you know, when it's up there, I think it's pretty much up there. I don't know if you could take it down once you put it up. Um, I really don't know. But um, you probably could. But um, I would just say it's a little more flexible. So that's that. Um, and like I said, I'll leave the information of how to access, like where to go, how to access it down below. Alrighty, so another question is, have you ever submitted two assignments at a time or submitted one before the previous was graded? Yes, however, it depends on who your instructor is. Now, there's no law that says, you know, as far as I can, so as far as I could see, when I looked at the instructions of the program, or of any course that you could not submit um, multiple assignments at a time. However, there were um, specific instructions that said, you know, you have to submit assessment one before assessment two, you know, especially if like the, that course, the assignments go in a specific order. So you can't submit four and then submit one and then submit three and then submit two if it's in a specific order. So that is definitely something to um, be mindful of. All right. Additionally, all right. So as far as submitting multiple assignments, um, look, this program, time is money. Okay. Time is definitely money. So if you know like your billing cycle is ending in like a couple of days, and oh, let's say three, four days and your instructor is one of those people who, you know, takes 48 hours to return your assignments and you've completed all of your work. You're just waiting to submit them. Me personally, I'd submit all of them. But you will have a feel of your professor. Like there have been times when I submitted all of my work in one shot. Um, there was also a time when, you know, I was enrolled in a class. And I thought I didn't want that instructor, but it ended up that I did want the instructor. This is a whole other situation. So um, what happened was, I don't even know if I want to get into that. Uh, you know what? This video is getting a little bit long. So I'll get into instructors, like it's selecting your instructors and things like that and dropping classes and all of that in part two. Okay. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I know this video ended kind of abruptly, but um, I, I want to do a series and I don't want to take up too much time, you know, just talking, 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 talking. So be sure to comment, like, subscribe, follow me on all my socials and um, feel free to like my page on Facebook and you can message me on Facebook, Instagram. Um, like I said, I try to get back to you guys as soon as I can. Um, because I don't want to be bombarded with a, a bunch of comments and questions. You know, I want to help you guys. I want to answer your questions. So sometimes as soon as I see them, I answer them, you know, if I'm not busy. So please, I encourage you, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to, um, message me. So yeah, that's it for now. Godspeed. Take care guys. See you in the next video.